Hey everyone, Mess here. Today we are exploring some simple but fun techniques. We will create this infinite growth effect using the Vellum Solver. This is going to be more beginner friendly, but if you are more advanced, I hope you will still pick up a tip or two. If you enjoy the content, feel free to check out my Patreon where I upload fresh tutorials every month. We also just launched our new Discord server. We are building a small community where patrons can ask questions and troubleshoot techniques together. You can also watch my Houdini presentation at New York Hack, where I break down techniques that I often use in production. So enough of talking, let's jump in. So we're back in Houdini, let's go ahead and make a new geo context. Let's dive in, make a file node and we need to load our asset which you can find in our assets folder, which will be included in our project file. So let's go ahead and load it. And this is a free asset from Polyheaven. So right now we need to isolate a single leaf. So for example, we can choose this one. So let's do a blast node. Click this and double click. Oh. And double click and let's invert it. Now let's add transform. I will do move pivot to centroid and then move centroid to origin. This will make sure our geometry is in scene origin. So now let's make sure our leaf is looking into x direction. Yeah, this way. You can see it here in the corner and to make sure it will align during the scattering correctly let's do a match size and let's choose our x to minimum yeah maybe let's rotate slightly more something like this and our size is huge if you see it's around 20 meters so let's do a, reduce it to 0 0.01 yeah, now it's much better. Now let's create a line. For now we will leave it at uh, 1 meter length. Let's do a resample to add some more points. Resample. Let's enable our points and let's write something like 0 0.02. And let's if we and if you check, we have around 50 points, so that's quite good. Now we need to add normal, so let's do orient along orientation along curve. So this will add our normals. And now let's add uh, scatter and align. We don't need this into our first input, but, uh, but to our second input. So let's connect this. And one thing we need to change, we don't need to scatter points because we already have points. Uh, so we will change it to add attributes to existing point cloud. Now it's ready to be copied. So let's do a copy to points. Our leaf to the first input and our points into second input. And if you look, we should see something like this, which means which means it works correctly uh, and and you see they are all oriented the same way so if you scroll down until you see rotation around normal let's increase max angle all the way to 360 and now we should see something like this and if you want to add more variation in scale we can play around with this scale so minimum and max we can for example reduce the max something like this and maybe the minimum smaller yeah something like this works fine so we have our source down now we need to make a identical version of this copy with smaller pieces and why smaller i will explain in a second so let's make a copy of our copy two points and let's add a attribute adjust float so we can have a control over a p scale i will change the operation to multiply 
uh, it will set to zero, but we can't have zero value with vellum. So let's put the 0.1 and we have this. So we have identical amount of points. Here we have our final form and here we are initial form. And we will, and we will tell the vellum to blend in between those two. So why it's 0 0.1 and not zero? Simply because vellum can't work with zero scale. It will start bagging. In animation, you can see the leaves appear out of nowhere, but it's a simple trick we will do post simulation. But during the simulation, we will blend between this and this. So how we blend? We need a simple mask. So we can create mask many different ways. The simplest way that we can do is a mask from geometry. And geometry, we can add simple sphere. And let's connect into second input. Uh, if we visualize, if we click here, it will visualize our mask and we can see our fall off. I will make our sphere a bit smaller, but longer so it can cover wider area. And now let's add a transform after our sphere and let's simply transform it. So in the first frame, it's outside of our leaves. Let's make a keyframe, go something like maybe 150 and let's do it all the way up something like this. I will click V to open the speed graph and make it linear animation. So we should see something like this. Uh, right now we have two white fall offs, so I will go into our mask and just crash this slightly, something like this. And I will make our geometry mask a bit wider to include all of it. Yeah, something like this. But now we still have it affecting in the initial frame. So let's go frame one and make it even lower. Yeah, this is perfect. Now we need to blend between this and this based on our mask. So uh, the way I like to blend, it's using wops. So let's do a wop. I will call it uh, scale blend. This will be our first input and second input will be our small ones. Now we need to know each input's position. So first input position is here, but uh, from the second input, we need to call import point attributes. It's already set on P, let's connect point number to point number. And now we need to blend between this and this position. So let's do a mix. I'll connect our first position to here and second one into second input. And the result will go to your position. And if we and if we change the bias, you will see it should do something like this. But we will not animate like this, but instead we will use our mask, which was created by this, to run the blending. So let's add a bind, let's write a mask and connect it into our bias. If you play, we see it's working fine, but it's opposite of what we want. We need to small ones get bigger. So we need to invert it. We can do it many ways. One way we can do is to invert our mask or we can simply invert this ramp here. Or third option, we can just switch our first and second inputs. So now we have our mask working and it's a good time to add our simulation. Uh, but just before it, let's add a group to include everything in a group. Let's do a group node, make sure it's on points and let's name something like group uh, rest. 
now let's add a null here. We will need it later. Let's write out rest. And finally the vellum nodes. First will be vellum constraint, which will be a cloth. And the vellum solver. And if you play now, everything gonna just fall. First, let's go to the forces and disable the gravity, put it to zero. And now let's go double click and go inside. And inside we need to add a rest, vellum rest blend node. Connect into our force. So rest blend will tell our solver to blend between those two states. A, a couple things to change here. Let's switch the single frame to each frame. Let's uh, enable the group and add our group rest. Simulation geometry, we need to switch to the SOP because we created it in our SOP level. And to point to the right stop, let's copy this null and paste it here. And this should be everything. If you go back, let's play and see what we have. So as you can see, everything works as it should. The pieces fly apart once they get big, which is totally natural. If you want something like this, it's fine but let's go ahead and fix them in their place. So right after our transform, where we have the leaf, let's add a group node. This will also be a point group. I will call it group pin. I will disable the base group and enable the keep in the boundary region. Let's make it a bit smaller and let's and let's make sure we have enough points something like this these are the points that we will tell them to be pinned and not move which will act like a regular leaf being connected to the stem and now let's go to the right after our cloth solver let's add another vellum constraint and this one this one will be a pin to target switch to points to see our group group pin and pin type let's make sure it's set to soft and this stiffness is too high for us so let's switch something like 100 And now let's play again and see how it works right now. Yeah, now we have what we're looking for. Uh, right now let's take care of the small pieces because they are still visible. So now we need our mask to control again disappearance of these small ones. Uh, but I will not use this exactly this mask. I will copy it next to it. And why we copy? The second mask is gonna control the moment when invisible ones become just visible. So we might want to change that slightly to be like a more wider or tighter. So just to have extra control will be good to have it separate. So let's do attribute transfer. and transfer our mask into our vellum simulation. And on attribute transfer, let's uncheck the primitives and select our mask. So how we can hide those? There are also many ways we can approach this, but probably the easiest way will be if we add delta mush, which is a quite decent not to smooth things out 
and I will make it like a really high like a, for example like thousand and you can see everything disappears this is pretty much what we want and now we're going to blend again between this and this based on our mask so since we created this blend already let's just copy this let's put this here and let's connect the same way first input and second input and if we play and see now it works pretty much just fine and now you see if you go to our second mask here we can control how the blending works exactly this is why we had the second mask to be able to have more freedom over this section even though our leaves are invisible I noticed that Karma still renders some dots when we render because if you check in our point mode we still have our points so to clean this let's simply add a clip knot uh, let's instead of position let's choose our mask and let's make our distance slightly higher than zero maybe zero point maybe zero point zero two something like this let's review it again now let's go ahead and add some smoothness and thickness using vellum post process so vellum post process let's make the subdivision to loop and let's add extrude by thickness and maybe something like 0 0.05 just a little bit and having a bit of thickness will help to have nice subsurface scattering during the rendering so maybe let's do quick flipbook before moving forward so this is what we have so far I think it looks decent now let's quickly place it into our rendering setup and I will quickly show you how things work there so in your hip files where you see this yellow lob net this is where the rendering will happen let's make sure we have our null copied go inside and when where it says fx import let's paste our link here now let's make a new camera let's find the right framing when the background is behind us Maybe something like this click render wait a couple seconds and we have it thanks so much for watching please give it a like if you enjoyed it let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions and see you next time